Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara. Hello, everybody, and welcome. As you can see, I'm kind of... I just did that video on the fucking um, broadside book. And, and now I'm doing the video on this book. Here's the thing. I like a couple poems in Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara. But I do not like all of the poems. I do not want all of the poems. I do not want green eggs and ham. Um, which is honestly probably a better poem than everything in this book. Um, can't fuck with Dr. Seuss, dude. We'll fuck you up. Okay, so I've learned a few things. One, I'm fucking tired of fucking, like, especially beat poets name dropping people. I don't fucking care. And I know it's like 60 fucking years too late or 70 years too late. And what I say has no effect on anything since most of you fucks are dead. But seriously, the fucking self fellatio and fucking masturbatory bullshit, it makes... Okay. For the people, especially beat poets who had beef with Eliot making poetry inaccessible to the common man, to do this kind of shit is the exact fucking thing that you're pissed off about. When you start talking about all your buddies and friends or people that nobody fucking knows... And you say it in a way, because it's one thing if you're writing a poem about someone. Like, I could write a poem about my mother, and people would understand, oh, that's his mother. And then they'll start, like, putting, like, their own experiences with their mother through their thoughts as they read this thing to try to relate with the poet. This is just, like, I know Tim, and I know Billy, and I know Paul, and we go do shit, and it's so fucking cool, and then we went to this place that's really hard to get into, and we drove a car. It's like, shut the fuck up. Fuck, man. And I'm, I'm on one right now. So, like, if I would have done this video yesterday, like, all of this w wouldn't be here, and I would just be saying things. So I'm saying things in kind of an angry tone. Don't think I'm mad. I don't hate this book. I really don't. I just kind of hate it. Oh my god, is smoke coming off my hair? I feel like I'm steaming. Jesus. So I want to go through some of this. It got to the point where every time I came on a poem and didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, I just stopped. I'm like, nope, you lost me. I'm done. And I'll just keep going. And this happens in almost every fucking poem. <sighs> His structure is very weird and somewhat unappealing. Okay? What the fuck is that? And then we got a bunch of poems just called poem. Which is fine, I guess. I think one of the poems in here that I like the most is the one from um, the one that was in the City Lights anthology. The um, Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. It's the one about parents who, parents should send their kids to the movies kind of shit. Um, that poem's still good. And maybe these poems don't age well because a lot of the people he's talking about were like beyond just um, the other poets, but like drop in Fellini in here, Jackson Pollock, Pierre Riverdi. You guys are like, dude, why are you acting like you can't say that guy's name? Pasternak. And then there's a lot of stuff where he just starts going into other languages. Like this one here seems like he's hitting in some German and this is going to go into French I think Mal Waldron don't know who that is maybe I'm supposed to that's the other thing it's like it's like this this book 
needs like a prerequisite class for you to be able to enjoy anything that's in here. Like you should know at least seven languages and you need to romp with all of my homies kind of thing. This, we have some crew chef here. That's fine. And then Beckett and Vincent, um, Grace and Gaspar and uh, Gerhard. We're just naming people now. It's just like, I'm just going to start naming people. Jean Dubuffet, Sonia Dulaini. I don't fucking know. Oh, and then we have Duke Ellington. Kind of hip. Kind of cool. Um, this is a personal poem, and he starts talking about this guy named Mike, but he says his last name, so it's like I'm supposed to know who the fuck he is. Um, and then we have Lionel Trilling, Don Allen, um, Herman Melville, and we're talking about Leroy and Moriarty. Let's see, next poem. Oh, we're talking about Allen again, and Kenneth Coach. Oh, this is interesting. And Peter and Joe and Kenneth and Norman and Shirley and Jane. Oh, and another Jane. A Jane with two different last names. Oh, and Irving and Renee and Pierre and Samuel, Reverde, a bunch of other names I can't pronounce. And then we're in a different poem on the next page. And we have Gianni and Elizabeth Taylor and Jane and um, anybody else on here? A couple. Oh, Eric, and Marnie, and William, and Betty, and Hart Crane, uh, William Morris, Samuel Greenberg. If you guys are annoyed, so am I. I, I read this fucking thing. Oh, Lillian Gish. She's cool. Picasso. Bill Berkson. Bunch of other names I can't pronounce. Oh, and I think this guy invented Insta Poetry. The fifth poem in a poem series called Five Poems is just this line. I seem to be defying fate, or am I avoiding it? Oh, and we're talking about Adolf and Bill in that one, too. For some reason, the way the words fall on this page, I feel like the page is upside down. And I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. But that's what I feel like. Oh, and then we have another poem that starts off in... Um, I think that's French. I mean, I, I love having the first line of each poem I read be in a language I don't understand. And some of you fucking snobby up-your-own-ass motherfuckers are probably like, It wouldn't hurt you to take a foreign language. Fuck off. I bought a book and I want to read it. Jesus. Wouldn't hurt you to quit being such a douchebag. Um, and then we have this one. Oh, Fanny. Oh, and then this one it has a little bit about Lana Turner and Ginger Rogers. There is a Lana Turner poem in here that I actually liked, even though I didn't want to like it. I was giggling. Kenneth Koch again, Chester, Toby, Nicholas, Poem and Form de Saw, Robert Frost. Oh, we have, um, in this poem, we have a poem by D.H. Lawrence in the beginning of the poem. And, and this is for Bill Berkson. And believe it or not, I'm not sitting here just talking mad shit. Like... I wanted to like this book, and I think that's why I'm so fucking pissed. Am I pissed because I was wrong? Is that the problem here? I do not like the way he sets stuff up. Like, his... It's just... It feels weird. It makes my eyes feel like I'm falling over. But this poem called Poem which I think should be called Lana Turner Has Collapsed, is kind of funny. Here, I'll read it to you. Lana Turner has collapsed. I was trotting along, and suddenly it started raining and snowing, and you said it was hailing, but hailing hits you on the head hard 
so it was really snowing and raining and I was in such a hurry to meet you but the traffic was acting excite exactly like the sky and suddenly I see a headline Lana Turner has collapsed there is no snow in Hollywood there is no rain in California I have been to lots of parties and acted perfectly disgraceful but I never actually collapse Oh, Lana Turner, we love you. Get up. That was the only other poem in here that gave me any kind of emotion. Because when I read it, I went like this. <laughs> that, that, was my, that was my visceral human emotion in reading that. Oh, now this one. We, we have Sally and Emma... Oh, this poem is dedicated to the health of Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg could go fuck off, but this poem is dedicated to his fucking health. And that's fine. Halmut. We're talking Adolf again. Max Steiner. Um, Errol Flynn. Allen, Allen. And that's it. Uh, that is Lunch Poems by Frank O'Hara. I thought there would be more sandwiches. I'm not going to lie. <sighs> but yeah, so I think what, what I've learned here is when everyone else around you is so bad, you can look really good. So now I understand Ginsburg. I understand Ginsburg's popularity. And maybe maybe this is the same thing with like Ezra Pound. When like Ezra Pound told Hemingway, like, no, don't write poetry. You fucking stick to your short stories. Like stay out of my yard. Like I'm the fucking guy who writes poems around here. Like, is this what Ginsburg and Ferlinghetti were doing? Like if we just keep saying all of these like subpar people are really good then we'll look better I don't fucking know I just don't understand why so much poetry just is so it's snooty I don't know another way of putting it maybe it you know what it's probably from reading poetry by educated men and honestly there's probably a lot of poetry out there over the years that has been written by non-educated men and I don't mean like uneducated I mean non-academic like people who don't fancy themselves I feel like I'm biting my tongue right here and I really shouldn't fucking feel like that Poetry should have rhythm, okay? It's, it's like this music, okay? But the whole idea of what poetry is supposed to be is the simplest, easiest way to convey any feeling, any emotion, anything taking your ability to use words and make someone feel something off of those words. Being able to transfer emotion from your words to someone else's soul. That's the art. That's the poetry. This is just... Hey! And I don't get it. Like, people have been banging on about Frank O'Hara to me for, not forever, but for a while. And there are people who I respect a lot who really dig Frank O'Hara. And, like, I don't get it. That one poem I read, I liked it. I'm like, that's a clever fucking poem. I like that. It's clever. And I'm not even talking about the fucking Lana Turner poem. Okay? talking about the send your kids to the movie theater poem. I don't know, man. I just feel like 
the beats were fucking all beat and no meat, you know, like it was all the the crew, the the click, the persona, the fucking we're the shit, like we're all buddies, look at us, we're fucking amazing. Like let's write poems about how awesome all of us are together and we could talk about things, maybe whatever. I don't fucking know. I'm depressed. I'm fucking depressed. Oh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to read a palate cleanser now, and that's okay. Um, if you want some better poetry, you could pick up um, Potato Manifesto by Bunny Wild while supplies last. These are going really quick, actually. And um, next week, you could pick up my Los Angeles poetry book. And if you haven't grabbed this issue of The Blood Rag... With Slady Valheim, Garrett Carroll, B.L. Kohler, Beth Walker, and yours truly, you're missing out. So go down to the links below and you can pick up all of this stuff. Um, and also with um, Potato Manifesto, while supplies last, there are bookmarks included with those for free. So until we meet again... Thank you for your support, and keep buying my books. You guys are awesome. Talk to you soon. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.